Okay, hi, it's LDO Tony Nyikam, and welcome to our math lecture on capital structure. Remember from the lecture session that we have wired on cost of capital, as so well as weighted average cost of capital, we discussed around, we discussed the implication of the famous capital structure on the final weighted average cost of capital figure that is determined. So in this lecture, we're going to dig deeper or into detail into the firm's capital structure. What does it mean? Does it have any implication of the value of an ended ETC? So on completion of this lecture, we expect you to have covered what does it mean around capital structure. But from a capital structure perspective, what are, what are we trying to achieve? It's all around the financing decision. Remember, capital structure we're looking at, are we financing our business with equity? Are we financing our business with, with the debt? So the big question is, how does a firm's capital structure affect the value? If it does actually affect a company's value. And also, is it possible to increase the value of a firm by playing around with the firm's cap capital structure? So objective, explain how leverage increase the return and potential loss to investors as well as how does debt increase a firm's or company's financial risk. And also we are going to discuss around why we think or there are schools of thought that through there is no opt optimal capital structure under certain assumptions. Then we are going to discuss a bit around the inclusion of tax, distress and other costs that can alter the company's capital structure. Okay, so I'm going to start off with business risk. So you are going to find that the moment you decide to go into business, it carries with it some form of risk. So what do you mean by risk? So this is the potential that things are not going to go on as intended. So the key thing from a business perspective is being able to balance off those particular risks. Specifically looking at business risk as well as financial risk. And normally, theories in financial management then say we need to be able to match long-term assets with long-term finance as part of managing our financial risks. So what do we mean by business risks? Risk is determined by the operating activity of the entity as well as the nature of the industry. So for example, a company operating in the financial services sector and a company operating in the manufacturing sector, they are going to face different operating risks. Why? Because of the nature of the industry that they are operating from. Or a company in the retail, this is a company in the construction industry. So effectively, that's what we mean by business risk. And then also, this is demanded by level of fixed cost to variable cost. That is the effect of operating leverage. I'll give you an example. A company which has got a high fixed cost structure, normally needs to push more vo product volume, that is, have a higher vol revenue figure in order to compensate for the high fixed cost structure. So effectively, the moment there's a drop in revenue, that company may easily go into a loss position. Versus the company with a low fixed cost base. Even if there's a drop in revenue, they're not going to go easily into losses. In normal, that's what we are calling operating leverage, which is coming from the fixed cost profile of a business. From a calculation perspective, operating, operating leverage is equal to total contribution versus earnings before interest and tax. Now, if you are from your undergrad studies, you then also remember principles of our break-even analysis. Effectively, it's more or less the same concept that we are looking at under operating leverage. Then, let's dig deeper into financial risks. What contributes to financial risks? Normally, financial risk is affected by the capital structure of an entity. That is the balance between debt and equity. How much debt is a Kanban used to finance its operation versus the equity? In the moment of the debt on our balance sheet, it means we are going to carry interest rate risk and capital risk. What is this? Interest rate risk is the cost of that acquired debt, which normally would be an obligation to pay. 
then capital risk is come from the fact that ordinarily debt we have to pay back the principal amount. So to put it simply, we always have a risk that we may fail to pay the interest or we may fail to cap pay back the capital invested in our business. However, when you look at equity finance, these are funds provided by shareholders and ordinarily the returns to shareholders will come in the form of dividends and capital growth. So when you look at dividends, as a business we don't have an obligation to pay back a dividend versus interest rate. If you then compare to interest, interest is an obligation for us to pay the interest. So we are going to look at the implications of that dynamic between debt and equity. So debt finance, what do we mean by this for the purpose of this discussion? These are all borrowings that carry contractual interest. So the key thing here is contractual. We have an obligation to pay the interest. And we also have an obligation to repay the capital amount borrowed. It includes both long and short term as well as secured and unsecured debt. Okay, let's dig deeper into find operating leverage. Remember we said operating leverage takes cognizance of the company's overhead structure. So a company with a high operating leverage leads to more business risk. Why? Because we are saying if a company with a high operating leverage, any marginal drop in sales in sales may result in the in a decline in its earnings before interest and tax. So remember how we calculate the operating leverage contribution divided by n before interest and tax. So if you look at this simple graph, we are saying if uh, the x-axis will go to our sales, then the y-axis will go to our n before interest and tax. If there's a drop, if a company with a high operating leverage, which emanates from having a high fixed cost structure. Can you see for the second diagram, our fixed costs are way above, and then if you compare to this, our fixed costs are a bit lower. Which means that the moment we got a marginal drop in sales, it's going to eat into our earnings before interest and tax. If our sales start to go in this direction, the impact on the business is going to be higher. So what do we mean by high operating leverage? We are saying our break-even point is way, way higher. So let's discuss by using an example. Let's say a company has got this cost structure. Variable costs of $4 per unit, selling price $10 per unit, and they intend to produce 10,000 units per annum. And they would fixed cost of $100,000 per, per year. So what is our contribution? Remember, contribution is equal to Selling price minus variable cost per unit multiplied by our total production output. So with this 180,000 contributing toward the company's fixed cost, which in this case is coming to 100K. So our earning before interest and tax, which is now contribution less our fixed cost, is equal to 100, is equal to sorry, 80, 80,000. So operating leverage is equal to total contribution, which is what? Contribution, we said 180,000, divided by earning before interest and tax. So operating leverage in this case is 2.2, 2.2, 2.25. So total contribution divided by earning before interest and tax. So what does this 2.25 mean? So it says for every 1% increase or four in sales or contribution, there will be a 2.25 percent increase in earnings before incident tax. So it means the higher this operating leverage is, the more the risk that this business will be carrying. Because any one percent change, so let's say the operating leverage is five, it will mean that for every one percent fall in sales, we are going to have a five percent fall in earnings before incident tax. Highly sensitive. So, then on the other side of the coin, we also have financial leverage. 
So where does this come from? This normally comes from the amount of debt we are carrying on our balance sheet as a, as a business. So the moment a company is financed by debt, it will cause net earnings to be levered up or down, depending on the return on assets in relation to the cost of debt. So let's use a simple example again. Company A is 100% equity finance. And company B is 60% equity finance and 40% debt finance. And this debt finance is carrying in the 12.5%. And let's assume a tax rate of 29%. So it means for company A, the total assets or capital investment, let's just say 1,000, company A made up of entirely equity, company B made up of debt and equity. And these companies have just the same end before interest and tax of 400. But company B is paying in so 50, 50 dollars to give an earning after interest of 300 for company B, 400 for company A, and a net income of 284 for company A and 249 for company B. So you are going to find that the return on assets for both companies is going to be the same. Why? Because for the purpose of having the return on assets, we are going to take into account the tax effects. Which in this case, for company B, because the interest is ordinarily allowed by the deduction, it will then negate the additional interest expense. But if you then look at the return on equity, company B has got 41.4%, company A is 28.4%. But if we then remove the interest rate from the return on equity, we still come back to more or less the same position. So what is this information telling us? The degree of leverage. So we are saying that the effect on net income is measured by the degree of financial leverage. What is the formula? Any before interest and tax divided by any before interest and tax minus I. So, example, assume same factor as our first example, which is the previous slide, and an interest charge of 16,000. So the degree of financial leverage is going to be our contribution, so our earnings before interest and tax, divided by the interest we are paying, which gives us 1.25%. So what is the implication? It means for every 1% change, in any before interest and tax, there will be a 1.45% change in net income. So definitely, companies with a higher financial leverage increases their financial risk. Why? Because if there's a drop in their earnings before interest and tax, it's going to result in a bigger impact, adverse impact on their net income. Then we look at operating leverage and we also look at financial leverage. So what is the degree of combined leverage? So this then measures the combined effect of operating leverage plus financial leverage, which is equal to, so we said operating leverage contribution divided by any before interest and tax, then financial leverage any before interest and tax divided by any before interest and tax minus interest. So the combined leverage is equal to contribution divided by earnings before interest and tax minus interest. So in the example here, we then get a combined leverage of 2.8125%. So what is this negative effect of financial leverage? So if you look at the previous example, we had company A and company B, but in this example, operating income is fallen to 20 million. For the year, and then company B has fixed interest of 44 million. What is the effect on the company's return on equity? So it means if you look at company B, because of this four in any before interest and tax, it's showing a loss here, a negative net income, which means the return on assets for company B, so return on equity is now a negative four percent. Why? Because company B is carrying more financial leverage which means that the return on equity shareholders is now fallen. The return on total assets is not really changed. Why? Because the return on to the debt funders is fixed, is predetermined. It's guaranteed through a contractual obligation. 
Okay. So let's now consolidate this. What does financial leverage mean versus risk? So companies with high and certain, highly uncertain and very operating system they should make minimal use of debt. Why is the case? Because we are saying if you can debt onto your balance sheet, it's going to result in high financial leverage. And if you have uncertain returns or variable returns, it means your financial your operating leverage, any fall in your income will result in the company going to a loss position, thereby increasing the risk profile of the business. Or on the other hand, if your cash flows are subject to low risk, then companies should use high levels of financial leverage. You know that these not stable operations, you can project your pro cash flows with certainty and you are clear about how much you may be in sales when you are going to make. Yes, it's fine to, to use higher levels of debt financing. And then, whenever you are financing, like we said, as much as possible, this should try to match their long-term assets to long-term borrowings and not to do it vice versa because of the financial leverage risk. And then, if you finance long-term assets with short-term funding, it compounds the risk profile of debt finance. Why? Because those long-term assets will start to generate income at a later date. Yet, the interest cost on debt is required to be paid now now. And then that mismatch will again further compound the effects of the financial leverage which arises from debt financing. So our next step, we are going to go to part two of this lecture recording. We are going to further concretize to say, okay, we have looked at the financial leverage and the operating leverage. Financial leverage focuses more of what does it mean when you finance your business debt. And we are going to see how then this affects the capital structure of businesses. Thank you very much for taking time to watch this video and hope you are going to watch part two of this lecture recording. Thank you.